Hello. In this lecture, we are going to present a somewhat natural problem, which is not in P. Okay. Remember, we showed that P is not equal to X, and now we are going to use this fact together with a reduction to give another language which is not in P, but is somewhat more natural. And the proof will be somewhat similar and also somewhat complicated, uh, somewhat similar to the proof that the language of context-free grammars um, whose language is sigma star is undesirable, which we saw earlier. Okay. It is a scaled down version of this, which works for P and X, while the context-free grammar worked for undesirability. Okay, let us recall regular expressions. Okay, we define regular expressions denoted RE over an alphabet sigma as the empty set, the empty string, a, where A is a symbol in the sigma. Then you can have concatenation, union, and star. And these were examples. We spent a lot of time on this. This is just a quick recall. Okay, let us now consider the language all RE, which is the language of regular expressions whose language is sigma star. Well, we, we can't quite use this because it, it actually it's not known if all RE is in P. Okay? So we're going to consider a more powerful version of this language, which is made with uh, regular expressions with exponentiation, which we're going to abbreviate RE. -E, and then we're going to prove that all RE is not in P. So a regular expression with exponentiation is just an RE like before. But in addition, we're going to add the capability of writing R to the K, where K is an integer. And this is the concatenation of the, the, the expression R K times. So the language of R to the K is the concatenation of the language of R K times. So of course, I could do this just using plain concatenation. So what is the gain here? What is the gain? Well, the critical thing is that K is written in binary. So for example, uh, the language of A to one followed by six zeros would be what? Would be this string here, this many eight. So because I'm writing K in a binary, I can write down compactly very long arrays. And this is what makes the next problem hard, okay? Is the ability to write long arrays compactly. I could not do this with simple arrays because I will take a long, a long expression to write down these many concatenations. Okay, so let me define all RE to be the language of REE whose language is sigma star. First, uh, let us note that all RE is decidable. Well, uh, why is that? Well, we saw already that all RE is decidable. And if you have an REE, an RE with an exponentiation, you can convert it with some time and patience to an RE, right? You can just open up every exponentiation and write it down as a plain RE and then run the program for all RE. So all RE is decidable. And now the main theorem is that all RE is not in P. Okay, so how do we prove this? Well, we're gonna use the previous result that X is not equal to P. So we're going to suppose towards a contradiction that D, some machine D, decides all RE in polynomial time, 
Now we're going to show that x is equal to p, violating the previous theorem. Okay, so let's pick a language L in X. Okay, so you can find some constant c and a machine m that decides L in time to the power n to the c. And we're going to construct a d prime that decides L in polynomial time. Of course, under the assumption that all REE is in P. So how do we do that? We're going to define a machine D prime that on input W is going to construct an REE R such that the language of R is equal to sigma star if and only if M accepts W. And then what? Then we're going to run D on R and we're going to return the answer. If D accepts, we're going to accept. Otherwise, we're going to reject. Okay. This is just a plain reduction. It's very similar, as we mentioned, to the proof that all CFG is not desirable. Okay. So the bulk of the proof is to construct this expression R. So given M and C, we want to, and W, we want to construct a expression R whose language is sigma star if and only if M accepts W. Okay, and just like before, we're going to construct R whose language is a set of all strings which are not rejecting computations of M on W. And we're going to represent computation by a sequence of configurations separated by pound. So C1, pound C2, pound C3, and so on. So here's an example of a computation. Now, important question is how many symbols do you need in each configuration? How many symbols do we need? Can there be any number? Well, recall that M runs in time through the N to the, the C. So on input W of length N, M can use only how many tip cells? The same number, right? The same number, because the machine only moves the head by one cell in one step. Hence, each of our configurations only needs to have through the n to the c cells. Okay, so we have a bound on the length of the configurations. And is this different from the proof that all CFG was undesirable? What's the difference with that? Yes, it is different. It is different because there we had no bound on the length of configurations. Now we do have a bound. It's an exponential bound, but it's a bound. Okay. And this makes all the difference between exp and desirable. Okay. So let's construct R and similar to the CFG proof, um, we're going to construct R as the union of three REEs. So we want uh, the language of strings uh, which are not rejecting computations. So a string C1, pound C2, pound, pound, and so on, until CK is in L of R. If, if and only if uh, C1 is not the start configuration, or CK is not a reject configuration, or the most interesting step is that there exists I such that the CI does not yield CI plus one. We're going to construct REEs for A, B, and C separately, and then we're going to use the closure under union. Again, the overall structure is very similar to the one for CFGs and 
the critical point is that now we're going to be able to use exponentiation and a bound on the configuration length uh, to write down an RE for this. Okay, so let's start with the, with the first one. And RE, RA, whose language is that of strings where C1 is not the start configuration. Okay, so we can write RA as the union of S0, S1, Sn, Sb, and S pound, where S0 means that we do not start with Q0. How do we write this with an RE? Well, the first symbol is not Q0, and then you follow by any sequence of symbols. The second is that uh, SI says that uh, you do not have WI a position I, I between uh, one and N. How is this written? Well, I can use exponentiation here. It's not critical at this step here, but I can still use it. I can write Delta to the I, then in the I position, I do not have a W and then any symbols. And then SB is that you do not have a blank in some position T, where T is between N plus two and two to the N to the C. And here is where you need to use exponentiation because this number is uh, really big. Okay. So you have Delta to the N plus one. Okay. Followed by Delta or epsilon for length through the n to the c minus m minus two. So this means that I'm I'm placing some number of symbols between a zero and this number here because using epsilon here I, I can just omit symbols, and then I put any symbol which is not blank followed by any symbols. And S pound says that you do not have a pound in position through the end to the C plus one. How is this written? Well, this you can do as delta to delta to the two to the end to the C, then you do not have a pound and then any symbols. The second case is an RE, RB for the strings such that RK is not reject configuration, okay? And here you can just have RB to be delta minus Q reject, so you do not have the Q reject symbol, star. And the most important case is RERC, which are the strings where uh, there exists an I, such as CI does not yield CI plus one. And here, what are we going to exploit critically about TM computation? We're going to exploit locality of Turing machine computation. Recall the locality feature is that a Turing machine configuration yields CI, yields C plus one, if and only if for every J, the six symbols in the um you know in, in row i the symbol from j to j plus two and in row i plus one the symbols from j to j, j plus two to j plus two are consistent match the tm transition function delta so what does it mean if ci does not yield c, c plus one it means the opposite of this right so you're going to complement this means that you can find some J such that the six symbols are not consistent with the TM transition function delta. Okay, and this we can write with an REE. And here again, this is where I'm critically using exponentiation. So RC is the union over any uh, two by three uh, window of symbols, which is inconsistent with the TM, or what? You put any symbols that you want, 
Then at some point you put ABC, okay? These are ABC in the configuration CI. And then, and then I want to move to the next configuration. So the number of symbols in between is through the N to the C minus two, okay? So, and here is what I put here, this delta to the, to the through the N to the C minus two allows me to jump to the next configuration. And then I put my DEF here, the symbols here, corresponding to, conf to configuration CI plus one, and then any number of symbols. Okay, and we also need to show that constructing R takes time, which is just polynomial in the input length. And this can be uh, easily verified, uh, similarly to the previous reductions in which we saw. Um, in particular, we can look at, it, at each piece. For example, if you look at SB, uh, you do have these big numbers here, but, but again, those numbers are written in binary. So the binary representation of this uh, only takes only takes uh, a number of symbols, which is polynomially in n. So we're able to write down everything in a number of symbols, which is polynomial in the input length. And this is what we need. Okay, so let's recap. We have seen this theorem that all REE, the language of regular expression with exponentiation whose language is sigma star is not in P, okay? This is a somewhat natural language, which is not in P, okay? Uh, remember, things like three sat, subset sum, three coloring, we, some people think they're not in P, but we don't know how to prove it. Uh, but this can be proved unconditionally that it's not in P, okay? And the the key of the proof uh, is that given M, C, and W, we're going to construct an REER whose language are all strings that are not rejecting computations of M on W. It is very similar to the proof for context-free grammars, but um, it's, uh, it has some differences and we exploit exponentiation uh, we exploited that we have a bound on the length of configurations, and this and this allows us to write down an R R E for this reduction. And again, here is one proof in which we exploit locality of Turing machine computation, and this makes the proof easier than than uh, Java. Okay, if our, if our model was a programming language like Java, okay, or C plus plus or whatever. Writing down this proof would be more complicated. The, the only way essentially that's known would be to first convert the program into a Turing machine and then apply this proof. Okay, so it's much more straightforward working with Turing machines. That's it for now. We have seen a language which is not in P, but is desirable and it's somewhat natural language. That's an exciting um accomplishment and for other languages like trisat tricolor we have to wait for you it's on you to prove it okay and solve the p versus mp question bye now